Using Photovoltaic MOSFET Drivers by Lewis Laughlin. I'm your host, of course, Lewis Laughlin. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. In this video, we're going to explain why I went over to photovoltaic drivers for many of my MOSFET switches. The there is a number of electrical advantages, but I'll state outright the one big disadvantage is disadvantage of these drivers is they're a little pricey. But let's explore why, then we'll look at what a few items that are available, and then some practical working circuits. All right, this is a circuit I've had published on my website for several years. Uses a standard LED bipolar transistor optocoupler. When we turn on the LED, be it a switch or an Arduino or whatever we're using, light falling on the base of the photo transistor switches it on and switches a voltage onto the gate of this in-channel MOSFET. Now the ones I've been using are the IRF 630s. These things are rated at 200 volts at 6 or 9 amps. Circuit works very well, but there are two limitations. First of all, the collector emitter breakdown voltage of the optocoupler is only 30 volts. Your second problem is your gate to source breakdown, known as VGS, is 24 volts for these particular items. So the reality is I can't use a voltage in this configuration higher than 23, 24 volts. And 24 volts gets a little iffy. If you go above the VGS voltage, you will blow the gate to the transistor. You exceed 30 volts, you will damage and short out the optocoupler. This is a big problem. For 12 and 16 volt circuits, this is fine, but if you want to switch 200 volts, you're out of luck. This is a similar circuit. This time, this is a P-channel power MOSFET. When the phototransistor is switched on, the voltage at the gate goes to zero. So we have a difference in voltage between using the gate as a reference and source. We have a difference again close to whatever the supply voltage is. Same problem. VGS uh, is still t about 24 volts. I believe this is an IRF 9630 and the breakdown voltage on the optocoupler is still 30 volts. So I have the exact same problem that I did with the other circuit. Be it a P-channel or an N-channel, I'm limited mainly by VGS. As I've mentioned in other videos, a photodiode is simply a P-N junction that when in the presence of a light such as an infrared LED or visible light or whatever generates a small voltage, a little under half a volt according to my measurements, it acts as a miniature low power solar cell. We can string a group of these photodiodes in series plus to minus plus to minus plus to minus like we would a solar panel and we can significantly increase our output voltage. This is precisely what is done in devices such as the TLP1918. It is simply has a photo emitter, infrared LED, and a group, a series of photodiodes, and a gate discharge resistor built into a single four pin package. When the LED is turned on, this will produce between 7 and 8 volts, which is plenty to switch on a power MOSFET, at least the ones that I have. You'll have to look at your spec sheet and make sure that your turn-on voltage falls within that range. Another variation of this is made by International Rectifier. You can see the part numbers here. 
PVI 5050N, a 5080N. These are single unit uh, optocouplers, or you can have dual unit optocouplers to drive two power MOSFETs. Another variation of that, I'll note that these do not have, as far as I know, gate discharge resistors. Those would probably be external. Then we have the Avego ASSR series, which consists, again, this is a dual unit, has a gate turnoff circuit built internal, but again, both are the same an infrared emitter and a string of photodiodes that generates a voltage to switch on a power MOSFET. Now remember a MOSFET is a voltage operated device and uses very very little current. In fact it should use no current but it uses something in the nanoamp range to the point that you have to have this gate discharge resistor or some kind of turnoff circuit so your uh, MOSFET will simply turn off. Now we're back to the in-channel MOSFET that I originally had in the second slide or first slide from the introduction. This is just a generic photovoltaic MOSFET driver you can use any of the ones that I previously mentioned but you're going to take the positive output put it to the gate and you're going to go ahead and connect the negative output to the common should have an internal gate discharge resistor when the LED is energized I get 7 volts on the dr uh, gate which turns on my drain to source pathway and the light bulb in this example will light up and I'm inputting 120 volts DC and yes you can pulse modulate these just like you do any other MOSFET circuit this diode here is the internal diode to the MOSFET this is an IRF 630 this diode is really internal if you use a MOSFET without an internal diode and you are using something besides a resistive load you're going to need some kind of diode here. This is very important because my gate turn on voltage is not derived from the high voltage and it eliminates a lot of headaches. And note when I energize the LED that produces the voltage I turn on the power MOSFET looking at this from the relay viewpoint if you wanted to package this as a little small relay on a PC board this would be normally open apply power the path closes and the light bulb lights up conversely you can take over here this is called an enhancement mode MOSFET we can take a depletion mode MOSFET that when the LED is turned off and no voltage is produced on the gate, the MOSFET will be conducting. Remember, depletion mode MOSFETs conduct when the gate is turned off. Enhancement mode MOSFETs conduct when the gate is turned on. So all the rules for the previous slide are the same except you have to apply power to the LED to turn off the switch. Same deal with the diode if you're dealing if it's not built into the MOSFET itself and it is in many cases uh, you will need an external diode if you are switching on and off magnetic loads in particular. Again we got a nice 120 volts we can pulse with modulate this and that leaves in fact a lot of circuits on say well let's take for example a personal computer motherboard you will see a bank of miniature MOSFETs and capacitors and it uses uh, switching such as this to drop the 5 volts that feeds the motherboards down to 1.8 volts 
for the processor. That's just one use as sort of a high speed switching step down. But again, our gate drive voltage is not derived from the high voltage, and really um, that makes circuit design a lot more simple. This is a Crydom uh, encapsulated power MOSFET switch. You can get ratings up to 20 amps at 60 volts DC. 10 amps at 100, 10 amps at 60, and 3 amps at 200. Um, these are MOSFET power switches. You have a DC input of 3 to 10 volts. And you have two pins on the output that and you gotta observe you must observe polarity. Um, these in some cases might be less expensive than buying the individual parts and building your own. How are they built internally? Well, here you go. LED emitter and some kind of resistor to current to limit the current. It's probably a little more complicated than just a resistor. There's other circuits here that limit the current to the LED from a range of, if I'm not mistaken, the range is something like 5 to 32 volts on these. Once again, what have we got? A string of photodiodes in series. We have a gate control circuit that will switch the gate off when the LED goes off and here is our end channel um, enhancement mode MOSFET LED lights up voltage generated MOSFET turns on power is delivered to the load over here um, the output is on pins 1 or 2 it doesn't matter which side whether the load is in pin side of pin 1 or the side of pin 2 observe your polarities on your diodes if you're using them and you'll use these external diodes if it's a magnetic load if it's a light bulb you can leave that out but observe your polarities if your load uh, requires a polarity that's all there is to this and that ends our brief introduction to photovoltaic MOSFET drivers. Uh, please visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com and keep viewing our videos. I got more on the way. Thank you for viewing.